The dust is yet to settle on Governor Belo Matawali versus EFCC Chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa's bribery story. The latest high-profile case of sleaze, which may or may not get a closure before President Muhammad Buhari takes his leave in three days' time. It is a story which, like several others before it, involves mind-boggling figures in dollar terms. Whatever happens, though, President Buhari's war on corruption is very likely going to continue in one form or the other or the, under his successor. So how can cases like this affect that war going forward? Well, Arise analyst Frank Tietje is here to offer his thoughts on that question and a lot more. Many thanks for joining us on Newsday. Thank you and my pleasure. Now, first of all, I'd like to have your thoughts on the altercation between Governor Belo Matawali of Zamfara State and the chairman of the EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa. Oh, well, that's uh, a new tactics that is not so new, that is often adopted by governors that are drowning in the cesspit of uh, uh, accusations of having, been, having stolen, pilfered, and uh, misappropriated uh, state funds. So uh, sources openly available uh, point to the fact that uh, Governor Bello Metawale has been under serious EFCC investigation for having uh, uh, misappropriated uh, sums up to the tune of 70 billion naira, uh, being sums that are, uh, he has allegedly converted to his personal private use. And uh, such a man, in, in the usual ma uh, expression that corruption would always want to find a way to fight back, has now resurrected the old tactics of now find uh, mud slinging, uh, just throwing around a uh, baseless and uh, unsubstantiated, spurious allegations against the personality of the EFCC chairman. It's an old tactic which hasn't worked in any way that has often been adopted by governors in their expiring days, uh, trying to whip up public sympathy one way or the other. So it, it, it may be sensational, uh, as it has been, but uh, totally lacking substance six days after the governor made that kind of uh, sweeping statement and uh, under the cover of his immunity, because if, he, if it was an ordinary person that made that statement, the person would have been invited to substantiate, to give uh, any form of ground for making that kind of statement. Six days after the EFCC dared him to make public whatever uh, a piece of evidence that he has uh, to support that kind of wild claims, the governor has docked, and uh, it appears that he didn't have any foundation for that. The tactic, as we have known, is to uh, use accusatory methods uh, to just throw around uh, all sorts of baseless statements in the hope that uh, the resolve by the anti-graft agency will be reduced in terms of investigating him. Unfortunately, uh, it's, uh, it's an old script which hasn't worked, and the EFCC is being urged not in any way to uh, to kowtow, to, 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 to be dissuaded in any way in that regard, uh, but be quite resolute. And it's not only Bello Metawale that is involved. There are several other governors on the EFCC watch list. Uh, the days of reckoning are, are fast drawing here. In fact, they are, they are being counted one, two, three. So it is, the expectation is that Metawale now has a double uh, question to answer. Questions as to how he used uh, Zamfara state funds and questions as to why he would uh, embark on an enterprise or criminal defamation against the personality of the AFCC chairman, or which, is, which is absolutely needless. Uh, I don't want to in any way praise uh, uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa, but he's, he, there is no doubt about the fact that he has brought some new trends to the way and manner the AFCC has carried out its operations recently in terms of uh, compliance to uh, the EFCC Act, first of all, general compliance to the rule of law, and then regard for the human rights of persons that are supposed to be accused persons. We've been watching, and we've seen that uh, the EFCC is no longer that just a poor organization, but an organization that works to show that it carries out its, 
you know, uh, very thorough investigations. And that's the reason why it hasn't gone much to the media to talk about uh, the, 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 the excesses of uh, personalities like Governor Bello Metawale. But governor, the governor knows quite well what is coming after him. That is why he has chosen to play that script, which is, is, is very important that Nigerians be very wary not to fall for such kind of uh, cheap blackmail that Metawale is engaged in at the moment using the personality of the EFCC chairman. I think for once, if others have played that trick and they left, and, and even though they still face the music, but the issue of criminal defamation was not taken against them, for once, Metawale must be challenged to the latter. We are not saying that uh, everybody, uh, somebody here is a saint, but in a situation where uh, a, a young person like uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa has painstakingly built a very towering uh, a, a personality and reputation that he has that is that is yet to be faulted in any way, and then to just make that sweeping statement under the cover of immunity, the moment, the very day Metawali loses his uh, immunity, he must answer to that particular thing. Such kind of injurious falsehood, even though Nigerians may not have to be deceived by that. Now, Mr. Tete, the governor also accused the EFCC of carrying out selective campaigns, saying they focus only on state governors and not on the federal government who also have access to the Treasury. Do you agree with this? Do you perhaps believe that the EFCC's anti-corruption war is indeed selective? There will always be complaints by persons who are drowning in the, in the accusation, I mean, in the fact that they have uh, pilfered state funds and they, that there is a mountain of pieces of evidence against them as to what is coming against them. There is, we must, we must acknowledge that in the time past, we have complained that, look, the petition system may not be very helpful. The EFCC, operate, EFCC does its best, to the best of my, our knowledge, in preventing corrupt, the, the happening of corruption, the commission of corrupt acts, the commission of uh, economic and financial crime. However, most often, the, what happens is that the EFCC acts on petitions that are written to it, coupled with, uh, uh, supported with facts and uh, a lot of evidence. Uh, it happens oftentimes, again, that it is mo these state governors that we see uh, uh, that, that operate like kings, that, like demigods, that, you know, that, that, that are answerable to no one, that put the, the, the state houses of assembly in their pockets, that actually carry out such form of mindless you know, corruption. That is the reason oftentimes you see that it is easier to point at the evidence of uh, humongous corruption, humongous pilfering, humongous misappropriation carried out by the uh, governors. That's the reason why oftentimes it happens on the, uh, the EFCC gets a, a mountain of evidence against them. It does not mean that the EFCC does not focus uh, its searchlight on the uh, federal inst uh, institutions, the ministry, department, and agencies. As a practicing lawyer, as my, a lawyer myself, I have seen several cases in this foregoing year how, how uh, involved federal institutions where also not only by the AFCC but by the ICPC where there have been investigations have been carried out we've seen persons being sent to prison particularly of note is a, a seven senator senator Peter Wabushi of Delta State who decided to subvert the funds and the contract procurement process of the NDDC the 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 the, the, the FCC was well, did not waste time I mean stayed on course and ensured that he faced the legal music, and today he's cooling off in the prison despite the fact that he's supposed to be a, a seven senator. So that is on an unnecessary prevarication, trying to, you know, in the usual manner of these governors, try to, you know, divert attention from them. Face what, the, face the accusation that is against you, and don't begin to, you know, fish for you, you know, sympathy from the public by making unfounded accusations, unfounded uh, statements. For example, the one we are dealing with which now may saying that the man, uh, the, 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 the respected uh, chairman of the EFCC gave him, I mean, asked him for a bribe. How? When? Who? At what point? Who was the witness? Did you make the recording? At what And I mean, it, it, it goes against every reasonable thinking that a, the, a sitting chairman of the EFCC will meet a governor and beg for $2 million. For what? You know, but again, even if it were to happen, 
Governor Bello Metawale, please, for the past five days, going to six days, bring pieces of evidence. And then what he says is to be giving excuses. No, why are they coming only after me? Because I'm a governor. Are they coming after a minister or a, a director in one ministry or a, a, a director general in the, in the federal government? That cannot be any tenable excuse. If there is corruption found anywhere, the, 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 the freedom of expression in this country allows any individual, either through his counsel or by himself, to write a petition to the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission or the Economic, Finan Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. If the FCC is very painstaking and very responsive in dealing with petitions that have been sent to it concerning governors, does not mean that it is turning a blind eye to the accusations against uh, persons working in the federal uh, government. Our eyes analyst, Mr. Frank Tietje, thank you so much for joining us on EU State.